Up next is Alex Castaneda with the Illusion of Limerick. Hello everyone. As mentioned, my name is Alex Castaneda. And last year, I finally met the love of my life. Well, come on, you gotta give me some cheer for that. It's not like I can say that very often. Let me tell you a little bit more about my romance. It follows a very cliche format where I could not believe I had met such an amazing, intelligent, and pretty girl. And thankfully, we had a strong relationship that lasted three solid days. <laughs> Needless to say, I cannot get my mind off this girl both before and after our long romance. She was my mental tattoo. Her constant presence within my thoughts got to the point where one day, I came up to my mother in tears and I said, I blew it, Mom, I blew it. She's the love of my life and now she's gone. Now, my mother was very kind and patient. And at one point during my whole rant, she looked at me and she said, Alex, you're 15, you're not going to die of a heartthrob. <laughs> now, I'll admit, I was hurt by this, but seeing what my mother said to me became my new mental tattoo. And I gradually began to think less and less about this girl. Most importantly, however, it made me re realize how everyone who surrounded me was going through something similar to my love story. This led me to do some research research, and here is where I found the real love of my life. Now, this lovely woman went by the name of Dorothy Tenoff, and she was an American psychologist who, back in the mid-1960s, wanted to understand the psychology behind love. At the time, there was not much study on love. It was a pretty vague concept. So she decided to conduct the research in the form of personal testimonies that she obtained from questionnaires, interviews, and letters from her reader. She got over a thousand of these testimonies, and she made sure that they were all from people who belonged to different age groups, cultures, and ethnicities. The purpose of her research was to provide evidence for her hypothesis that an involuntary psychological state occurs identically within people of different backgrounds when claiming they are in love with another person. At first, the testimonies went as she expected. The people who claimed to be in love showed signs that they had become more selfless and accepting ever since they began a relationship with their loved ones. Their happiness was their happiness. But as she continued to conduct these interviews, she began to notice a frequent characteristic in most of these testimonies. They all contained some degree of distress. The curiosity of this, however, was the fact that this distress came not from the pressure of a relationship, but from their attraction that they had love for their, their loved ones. Tenov decided to focus on this oddity within her research, and she eventually coined a term for it, limerence. At its core, limerence is a state of mind conceived from a romantic attraction. However, it is also characterized by an obsessive need to have one's feelings reciprocated. Now, the first symptoms of limerence are extremely common. And I have no doubt all of you have experienced this at some point in your lives. Uh, the gentleman in the front, what's your name? Armando. Armando, and how are you, Armando? Well, thank you. <laughs> You're just great. <laughs> Awkwardness, shyness, and, and stuttering are all basic symptoms of limerence. They occur whenever you are near the individual you are attracted to, or even when you simply think of them. These symptoms are all perfectly healthy. But the problem arises when these symptoms occur with an overwhelming frequency, in which case the first phase of limerence officially begins. Intrusive fantasies. Similarly to people with OCD, individuals with limerence associate any event or stimuli to the limerent object, the person they are attracted to. If a thought or an action has no connection to the person, one is immediately made. This often occurred with me during my romance. Whenever I wanted to pursue an activity, I got into the idea that there was no point in doing so, since I, would not, I was not doing it with my loved one. It brought me a deep sense of dissatisfaction, 
and it was a severe thought addiction, which is exactly what Tenov compares these intrusive fantasies as. They only provide a temporary escape from the reality that one is not with the person they wish they could be at every second of their life. These thoughts then become extremely routine, and they create a sense of familiar familiarity, and you be truly begin to live within an illusion of love. At its worst, individuals with limerence can begin to lose their grip on reality. They spend so much time in these fantasies that they forget about their activities and responsibilities. The biggest problem with this, however, is that in most cases, a person with limerence cannot flee from these escapades due to the next phase in limerence. Fear of rejection. Have you all heard the expression, he is out of my league, or she is out of my league? This feeling of self-doubt is very common among those moments where one is around the limerent object. The reason for this is due to a psychological process called crystallization where a limerent takes every single quality of the person they are attracted to and create an ideological figure of perfection. They choose to ignore any undesirable characteristic of the limerent object, and as a result, they deem themselves as inferior to the other person. This then results in a limerent's self-inflicted stagnancy. They become too fearful of approaching the individual they have so well purified within their mind. Yet despite all this, Despite the fact that they have lost their grip on reality, they do not lose their sense of hope. Hope that someday they will break free from this shell of self-doubt that incarcerates them, but more specifically, that their limerent object will liberate them. That someday, maybe these people will choose to love them back. And limerents desperately search for any indication of this reciprocation. A second of eye contact, a brush of the shoulder, or simple acknowledgement by hello is enough to allow a limerent to continue on with their dream escapades. In her book, Dorothy Tenoff cites one of her volunteers' testimony that serves as the perfect example for this tendency of hope. During this interview, Tenoff asked her volunteer about his attraction towards his limerent object, to which he replied, I don't direct this thing. This attraction it directs me. Even though I know that Emily and I have absolutely no chance of making a life together, the thought of her is an obsession. So why does this matter? Well, the best way I could answer this is by going back to our lovely woman. I never got around to explain why Dorothy Tenoff is so important to me, so here's why. In addition to my understanding of limerence, it is because of her that I now understand the value of questioning love. Questioning the love you may have for your parent, for your child, for your partner, but most importantly, your aspirations. If your matrimony may have been built upon a mirage, what does that say about your passions? Would you truly love being a doctor? Would you truly love being a musician, an artist, or a lawyer? It is by questioning what we love that we step out of love born out of familiarity or fear of rejection or even hope. And Dorothy Tenoff provides the steps to do exactly this. She developed three ways to end limerence. Now the first way is by starvation. This essentially means that one lets time desensitize any feelings of attraction. Consummation. This is where one finally obtains reciprocation from their limerent object. At times, this does, not, this does not end limerence due to the fact that a limerent expects a certain form of reciprocation. However, consummation serves as a form of self-reflection for people with limerence and allows for a limerent to truly wonder if they love this person. Now, the final technique is transference, where one passes their feelings of attraction towards another individual thus ending the initial limerence altogether. Now, the great thing about all these methods to mitigate limerence is that one can apply them to their daily life. The mitigation of limerence can go beyond a simple relationship. It can be a tool for accomplishment. Through starvation, you can contemplate if you truly love what you do. Through consummation, 
you can finally try out to become to what you're trying, striving to become and realize if you indeed love it. And through transference, you're expanding the possibilities for what could become your true passion, whether it be for academic achievement, for a better relationship, or for the love of yourself. I strongly encourage you to question what you love, because at the end of the day, it is the questioning of our love that serves as a catalyst for our fulfillment. Thank you.